Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today we're going to be doing a kaleidoscope effect Photoshop tutorial. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can get this kaleidoscope effect and what it's doing is really just creating patterns out of images. So this is going to be more of an abstract art style. Some images that are really good to use for this are florals, especially when you have them in bunches the way I have them right here. But any type of floral is fine. Architecture is really good for this style just because of the vertical lines and different, you know, like uh, churches where you have the arches and things like that. All of those types of, of images are really good for something like this, but really you can try this with any image. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I want to give you um, some examples of some that I've done. So this one right here was actually the inside of a church. You can probably see like right right here this was the image it just got duplicated so many different times so, so it turned into what you see here the image was so tiny that when you zoom in you can see all of the blurriness here of the image it looks nicer as you get in closer but uh, really on the outside not the best image um, just because it was so small uh, but there are some things that I could do with this to make it even more abstract and I'll go back to this and show that to you later. And then here's another one. This one had more of a sky and I actually had to add curves to this because the image was so overexposed so you can barely see it. So I went ahead and added the curves and that's what that looks like. And then this is the one that we're going to work with. I like it because it does have nice curves and lines in the flower but we're also getting a lot of different colors in here so I really like that. So we're going to use this one and see what we can come up with here. I'm just going to go ahead and unlock that layer. By the way I got all of these images from unsplash.com. I'll leave links so that you can follow along with me as well. But once I have that unlocked there what I want is a square image. So I'm going to come over here to the marquee tool and I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee up here in style. I'm going to choose fixed ratio uh, just because I want it to be my selection to be completely square. And I'm just going to probably choose. I, I like this right here, but I'm not really happy with this area right here. You could always clone stamp another flower there or whatever. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and grab some of this and and then just kind of work through. So I'm just using my keyboard to go up a bit on this. Uh, so I'm going to press the C on my keyboard. That's going to bring up the crop tool and I'm going to hit return twice to crop out the rest of the image. So this is what we're left with. If you don't like these little dark areas, you can clone in some other flowers. It's really not going to affect this image because we're going to be distorting it so much. So I'm going to come up to image canvas size. So my image right now is 2705 by 2705 pixels. This is going to be the final size of my image. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is. I'm going to come here to the size options. I'm going to choose percent and I'm going to change just the width to 200 percent. And I'm, I want it to go to the right. So I'm just going to click on that and then click OK. I'm going to select layer zero command and the letter J to copy it and then just drag it over to this side. So we have two of these, but what I want to do is flip this around so that they're mirroring each other. So I have this one selected. I'm going to come up here to edit, transform and flip horizontal. That way you can see uh, where they meet right here in this section and it looks like it's a mirror image of the other one. So I'm just going to grab both of these command and the letter E to merge those together. And just be careful that you don't have any white edges showing because that will show up when you start creating that kaleidoscope. Now right now I'm manually showing you how to do this kaleidoscope because it's a different effect than with the filter. I'm going to show you how to do the filters as well, but I want to show you how to manually make something like this. That way you have different options on which way you want to take your image. So once I have that, I'm just going to come back up here to image canvas size. And this time I'm going to change the size of the height. I'm going to come here to percentage and I'm going to change this one to 200% and I want it to go down. 
actually it will go up with this. So I want it to go up and click OK because I want this to be my center. Um, otherwise right here would have been the center. It's really up to you but for me I prefer this. So I'm going to select that layer, press Command and the letter J again. This time we're going to come up here to Edit, Transform and we're going to flip vertical for that one. And then I'm just going to take it up to the top and fit them together there. Select these and then command in the letter E to merge them together. And we've already got this kaleidoscope effect happening here, but let's try to take it a little bit further than that so that we can get this to be more of a circle in the center. So we're going to duplicate that layer one more time, command and make sure that you're you have it selected. Command the letter J. All right, with this one selected, the very the top one, I'm going to come here to edit, transform, and I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then I'm going to come up here and change the blend mode. So you can kind of go through all of your blend modes here to see what you like the most. I tend to go with lighten or screen for this one, definitely lighten, uh, but you know, you can scroll through these and see what you like. So click on lighten and I'm going to leave that. So you can see I have more of a wreath style here. Now it's a little bit bright for me. I'm going to do command J and then just do like an overlay. I think I'll stick with soft light for this one just to give it a little more contrast. Now I want to show you another way to do this using filters. So we're starting here. We're going to use that same crop that we started with and we're going to start the same way. We're just going to come up here to image canvas size and then I'm going to come here to percent and I'm going to take my width to 200 just like we did before. Click OK. Command the letter J and then take that over to that side. Again, I'm just going to flip this. So edit, transform, flip horizontal just to get this to mirror. And then I'm just going to grab both of those, command the letter E to merge them. So we're basically in the same spot that we were before, except this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to come up here to image, canvas size, and we're going to take the width even further. So I'm going to take this one to 300% and click OK. I'm going to take this, put it over here on the edge, command the letter J twice. Let me zoom out so we can see the whole thing. The letter V to bring up the anchors. If you don't see these up here, remember show transform controls needs to be checked so that you can see them. And then we're just going to drag this over to this side. You can hold the shift key to make sure that it's straight when you're moving it over. And then I'm going to hold I have this top one selected. I'm going to hold shift, grab the bottom one. That's going to select all of these. And I'm going to come here because I'm still here. So these should be up here. I'm going to choose this one to distribute horizontally. Okay, so now I have three copies of that. I'm going to come here, hold shift, grab the last one, command the letter E to merge them all together. So once I've created this strip like that, I'm going to come back into image, image size this time, not canvas size, the image size. And I want the, the height and the width to match. So I'm going to bring my width down to 37.569. That way we keep that square. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that's just going to smash it all together. So it's, it's definitely abstract and it's interesting. Uh, but what I want to do is make that kaleidoscope style. So I'm going to come here to filter. Well, make sure that you have the layer selected and then come in here to filter, distort and polar coordinates. So for this one, we're going to use this rectangular to polar. You're getting a preview here of the very center. When I back out, you're going to see it looks more like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I don't really like this outer section. So what I usually do is come over here to the marquee tool. I'll use the elliptical marquee and I'll grab this from the center, bring it out, holding the shift and option key. I'm just going to drag this out 
to the edges there. Okay, so I have that selected. Now I'm going to hit Shift, Command, and the letter I. That's going to invert the selection and just hit Delete just to get rid of that outside area. And this can be the final artwork. If you don't want that circle shape, you can just take what we already created with the stripes here. Hit the letter V on the keyboard. Make sure you have that layer selected and then hold the option or alt key on your keyboard and then just bring this up until you don't see that anymore. So either way, you can create that circle style or uh, a square like this. Now I wanted to go back to this image right here. I have all of this area just out of focus and it just, you know, the image is just bad quality. I can still use this. What I'm going to do is right click, convert this to a smart object. And I'm going to come up here to filter, distort and twirl. This is an old method that people have been using for a really long time, but you know, it's something that can be used here and it looks really nice. So I'm going to leave the angle at 100, per, or 100 degrees there and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to take that layer, command and the letter J, duplicate it. I'm going to come back in here to the twirl option and I'm going to take that the other direction. So it'll be 100, negative 100 and I'll click OK. Now I'm going to change the blend mode for this one to lighten. So this just looks like an abstract mandala or like a fractal art style. And of course you can do that with, with any of these. So I went ahead and did the same thing with this one, just, you know, adding the twirls in opposite directions, but I wanted to show you the different layer modes. So with the other one, I use lighten. And of course this image is so much lighter, so it's almost not even visible there. So I would use a darker mode for this one. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.